Chapter three is going to be all about the derivatives. So to start off, we really need to know what is the derivative. Specifically, when we say the derivative, what we're talking about is the slope of a tangent line to a function. So the question we're going to answer is, how do we find the slope of a tangent line? And really, to answer this question, when we want the slope of a tangent line through a specific point, there are two methods. Both work equally well. Sometimes one is better than the other to find the slope of a tangent line. Also, by way of vocabulary, when we say the slope of a tangent line, what we're talking about is what is called in calculus the derivative, the rate of change instantaneously at that point. So the first method we're going to look at, kind of to set it up graphically, say we've got some curve going on here. And we've got some point that we want to know what is the slope, what is the rate of change of the tangent line at that point. So if I go up from a, we get a point on the line. And that is at f of a. Well, to get a slope, we need a second point that we can calculate it off of. So we'll go off to the right here, and we'll pick some other random x, which has a point on the line and some f of x solution to that. So the coordinates of that second point in red are x comma f of x. And the coordinates of the point in green are a comma f of a. And the tangent line is the line that connects those two dots. Actually, that's a secant line. But the way we make that secant line, actually, let's first talk about the secant line. What is the slope of the secant line? Well, to get the slope of the secant line, it's just the slope of uh, the slope formula that we know already, y2 minus y1, and then we divide it by subtract the x's. So for the slope of the secant line, that's going to be f of x minus f of a, subtracting the y's, divided by x minus a, subtracting the x coordinates. And the way we make that secant line into a tangent line is we take x and move it closer and closer to a. We move x to a. And then that line is going to become less secant and more tangent. Well, we know how to express that, that the slope of the tangent line then is the limit as x approaches a of that same function, f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. So that is our first possible formula. It's going to be an important one for us for how to find the slope of the tangent line. There is a second way that's used quite often, and in fact, we'll probably use it more often overall in the course, that is similar to what we just did. So again. We'll make our little graph. And we've got some curve going on. And we'll have some a, which goes up to a point at f of a. But instead of going over to some x randomly, we're going to increase what we call h. So we end up with a point over here that's a plus h. And actually, let me do that in red a plus h. And so the a plus h gets this point up here. And so what we actually end up with is f of a plus h. So if we want the slope of the secant line that connects these two together, just like before, the slope of the secant line is going to be equal to the difference in the y's divided by the difference in the x's. Let's go ahead and label that. 
this uh, red point, the x coordinate is a plus h, and the y coordinate is f of a plus h. And then the green point is a comma f of a again. So for the slope, subtract the y's, f of a plus h minus f of a all over the x coordinates, a plus h minus a, which is nice because the a's actually subtract out to 0. So what we really have is f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. And the way we make this slope into a, or the secant line into a tangent line is we say we want that h, the amount we move over, to be basically 0. So we make the h go to 0. Or we say that the slope of the tangent line is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of that function, f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. And that is the second way we can find the derivative at a point. And both of these functions are going to give us the same answer, but it's two ways to get at that same value. And sometimes one way will be easier than another way. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through three examples where we calculate the slope of the tangent line and also the equation of the tangent line while we're at it. But uh, we're going to solve it both ways so we can kind of compare how the two formulas work together. So our first example that we're going to do is a polynomial. First, we're going to find the slope, and then we'll find the equation of the tangent line. Our polynomial is f of x equals x squared minus 3x. And we're going to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1. The first thing we need to know is what's the y-coordinate that we're working with. So f of 1 is equal to 1 squared minus 3 times 1, which is 1 minus 3, or negative 2. So we're really working with 1 comma negative 2 as our point. So using our first formula to solve for the slope of the tangent line, we know that the slope is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. Plugging in what we have then, we've got the limit as x this time is going to 1 of f of x, which is x squared minus 3x. Subtract the f of a which is what we just found. f of 1 is negative 2. So subtracting negative 2 is the same as adding 2, all over x minus the 1. What we see here is we can't do direct substitution, because if we do, we divide by 0. But we worked with this problem a lot with limits in our previous unit. So we know we need to factor that numerator. It's going to be x minus 2 times x minus 1 over the x minus 1. And when we do that, the x minus 1's can divide out. And now that we've removed that discontinuity, we can plug into our function the limit value of 1. So x minus 2 becomes 1 minus 2, which means we have a slope of negative 1. Now, I did say there were two definitions. Remember, the second definition would be as if we took the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. So we have the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h. Remember, a in this case is 1, so that really means 1 plus h. So x squared becomes 1 plus h squared minus 3x, which is 1 plus h. And then we subtract f of a, which we've already figured out in blue up above is negative 2. So minus negative 2 means plus 2 all over h. 
Multiplying out the pieces here, we've got the limit as h goes to 0. Squaring it, we get 1 plus 2h plus h squared minus 3 minus 3h plus 2 all over h. What's nice here is if we do the 1 minus 3 plus 2, 1 plus 2 is 3 minus 3 is 0. So now we've got 2, or the limit, as h goes to 0, of 2h plus h squared minus 3h all over h. Every single term there has an h in it that we can factor out to remove our discontinuity. h times 2 plus h minus 3 all over h. I probably could have combined the 2 and 3. Wouldn't matter. But ultimately, those h's divide out. And now we can plug in the 0 for h. So we have 2 plus 0 minus 3, which is negative 1. We get the same slope of the tangent line. The slope at 1 is negative 1. Now that we know the slope, we can find the equation. Remember, the equation is y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1. So plugging in the pieces, y equals the slope of negative 1 times x minus. The x-coordinate is 1, and the y-coordinate is negative 2. We have the equation of our tangent line. Let's try another example where we work through both of the formulas. Let's do a fraction. Let's say f of x is equal to 3 over x plus 1, and we want the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2. Well, first, we need to know what the y-coordinate is at 2. So we'll find f of a, or f of 2, remember that's the a, is equal to 3 over 2 plus 1. And 3 over 3 is just equal to 1. So we have the point x is 2, y is 1. Or a is 2, and f of a is 1. We had two formulas to find the derivative or the slope of the tangent line at 2. Uh, both of them work, give you the same answer. We're going to do both just so that we can see it worked out both ways. The first is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. So for this function, we're doing the limit as x approaches 2 this time of the function 3 over x plus 1 minus f of a. We've already found out that f of a is equal to 1, all over x minus the a, which is 2. Well, what we see here is we've got a complex fraction inside a limit. But we've seen this before. We know we can get rid of that by multiplying by the x plus 1, distributing it through on top and bottom. And when we do, be careful with that negative sign. The x plus 1's are gone, and we get the limit as x goes to 2 of 3 minus 1x minus 1 all over x minus 2 times x plus 1. The limit as x goes to 2 of 2 minus x over x minus 2 times x plus 1. And we know 2 minus x and x minus 2 can divide out as long as there's a negative 1 left over because the subtraction's in the wrong order. And now that we've removed that discontinuity, we can do direct substitution and plug 2 into the fraction. So we have negative 1 over x, which is 2 plus 1. And this gives us negative 1 third for our slope. The slope at 2 is negative 1 third. 
Let's try and work that out again, this time using our second definition of the derivative at a point. And that's the one where we take the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. So the limit as h goes to 0 of, this time we're going to take a plus h. a is 2, because we're at 2, so 2 plus h of 3 over x, which is 2 plus h plus 1, minus the f of the a. We know that's 1 all over x or all over h. The simplifying step is going to feel almost exactly the same. We need to get rid of that denominator. So we're going to multiply by 2 plus h plus 1 all the way across the numerator and the denominator. We're going to leave the denominator factored, however, because that's going to uh, reduce out the h in just a minute. So first fraction, we're just left with 3 minus, distribute the negative 1 through, minus 2 minus h minus 1 all over h. Don't forget the limit as h goes to 0. All over h times 2 plus h plus 1. And we could have combined the 2 and the 1 if we wanted to. It's not going to make much difference. What's nice now, though, is if we do 3 minus 2 minus 1, that's completely gone. So why don't we do that simplifying? We have the limit as h goes to 0 of negative h over h times 2 plus 1 is 3 plus h. And we notice those h's are gone. We've removed the discontinuity. And so we're able to just plug 0 in. We have negative 1 over 3 plus 0, which is negative 1 third. Same answer both times, so I'm feeling pretty confident going into my equation of the tangent line here. The equation is y equals my slope, negative 1 third, times x minus the x-coordinate, which is 2, plus the y-coordinate, which is 1. The equation of the tangent line to 3 over x plus 1 at x equals 2 is y equals negative 1 third times x minus 2 plus 1. One more example that I want to work through using both equations. This one is going to be finding the derivative with a radical. We're going to find the derivative or the slope of the tangent line of f of x equals the square root of x plus 1 at x equals 3. Uh, x equals 8, sorry, at x equals 8. So to do that, we first need to know the y-coordinate. So f of 8 is equal to the square root of 8 plus 1. 8 plus 1 is 9. Square root is 3. So we're talking about the point 8, comma, 3. We have two ways to find the derivative. We're going to do both here so you can see how they both work out. The first is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. So for our problem, the limit as x is going to an x-coordinate of 8. Of f of x, which is the square root of x plus 1, minus f of a. And we just found out that f of a, f of 8, is 3 all over x minus a. And that a value was 8. Now, we've worked with limits with removable discontinuities and radicals before. Our strategy in the past was we get rid of the radical by multiplying by the conjugate. And so we'll do just that. We'll multiply by the square root of x plus 1, change it to a plus 3 over the square root of x plus 1 plus 3. And that's going to remove the radical in the numerator and hopefully set up something we can reduce. So we now have the limit as x goes to 8. In the numerator, conjugates will just square both of them and put minus between them. 
When we square a square root, we're just left with the stuff, x plus 1. Always a minus between them, and 3 squared is 9. Over, we've got the x minus 8 times the square root of x plus 1 plus 3. Cleaning up a bit to combine like terms in the numerator, we've got the limit as x approaches 8 of x minus 8 over x minus 8 times the square root of x plus 1 plus 3. And that's nice because the x minus 8s divide out. Always remember, when we divide out everything, there's still a 1 in the numerator. And what's really nice is we've removed that discontinuity. So we're ready to plug that 8 into x. We've got 1 over the square root of 8 plus 1 plus 3. 8 plus 1 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Plus 3 is 6. We seem to be getting a slope of 1 sixth at x equals 8. Now, just to practice the other definition as well, we've got the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. I like writing it every time until you get this ingrained in your head. It's an important formula to know for the rest of this unit and beyond. So we've got the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a. This time, a is 8. So we're going to plug 8 plus h into the x, the square root of 8 plus h. And there's a plus 1. Minus f of a, we've already calculated that to be 3, all over h. Same strategy from here. We're going to get rid of the radical by multiplying by the conjugate, which is the square root of, um, let's go ahead and combine the like terms. 8 plus 1 is 9 plus h. We're going to make it a plus 3. Square root of 9 plus h plus 3. And when we do that, let's go on to the next line. We've got the limit as h goes to 0 of square the square root. We get 9 plus h. Negative 3 plus 3 is negative 9 over h times the square root of 9 plus h plus 3, which is really nice because 9 minus 9 is 0. And that leaves us with the limit as h goes to 0 of h over h times the square root of 9 plus h plus 3. Reduce out the h's, remembering that leaves us with 1. But what's important there is we have removed our discontinuity. So we're ready to plug 0 in for h. We've got 1 over the square root of 9 plus 0 plus 3, which is 1 over 9 plus 0 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3, plus 3 is 6. And we get the exact same slope. So we are ready to write the equation of our tangent line at 8 is y equals m, the slope of 1 sixth, times x minus the x-coordinate of 8 plus the y-coordinate of 3. y equals 1 sixth times x minus 8 plus 3. And so that's how we can find the equation of the tangent line at a point. We can use one of these two formulas. I believe the homework assignment tells you which formula to use for a given problem. So you get practice using both formulas with similar types of problems. But once you find the slope of the tangent line from one of those points, we just plug it into our equation formula. Take a look at some problems, and we will see you in class.